Welcome everyone. So for today, I have Thais Wardenberg and uh, he will be talking about their uh, article and their study around human-centered design and designing your life. And But before that, I would like to yeah, give Thais the opportunity to introduce himself. So Thais, how did you get into this topic and yeah, what's your affinity around neurodiversity? Yeah, thank you very much, Lana, uh, for having me here and to uh, talk about uh, about my project called uh, Design Your Life. Uh, I have a background in, uh, in user-centered design, as you mentioned, and I got involved in a research project uh, about, uh, about autism uh, a while ago. And uh, after that, I started uh, uh, my PhD about two years ago on this subject of, uh, of autism or neurodiversity and uh, and how people can design their own technologies and um, it's not even only for autism I think it's something that everybody uh, might do uh, in the end um, so that's that's in short what my project is about well I'm so excited to get to know more about the core principles I know we've discussed this over LinkedIn and in the conversations that we've had. So yeah, can you help you know go through the core principles as to how you went about in this in this project? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'd like to share a, a short presentation with you uh, and then I can explain my uh, my story a bit better, I hope. So I will now start sharing my screen. Um, can you see this now? Great. So, uh, as I said, my project is called Design Your Life, and um, and it's about user-initiated design, as it's called, for young autistic adults. Uh, I'm with uh, two research group. One is called Flourishing with Autism at uh, Han University of Applied Sciences, and the other one, also my background, is human-centered design at the University of Twente. Um, and I'm starting with this anecdote about a. Uh, this is a jack plug for for a headphones uh, for a phone, um, and this is used by one of the one of the involved participants of our project, and she's using this uh, to block all the sounds of her phone, uh, because uh, yeah she gets annoyed by these uh, by the sounds uh, sometimes, and uh, and she uses the the yeah the, the plug of of her headphones, and she cut off the wire uh, to block all these sounds. And I think this is an amazing uh, solution to uh, for, for something that she is uh, she has to deal with. Um, but it's really hard to make these kinds of solutions. So uh, this is also a quote. You can see it's easy to make things hard, but hard to make them easy. Uh, but this is what our project is about. How how can you come up with these kinds of really ingenious solutions uh, for uh, for the things that you uh, that, that you care about? So this is uh, this is basically what I'm going to uh, to talk about in in really short, uh, starting by autism and technology, and then I'm going to explain, like you asked, uh, about the core principles of our of our approach, and then I will show some uh, some prototypes of the toolkits that we developed together with uh, with design students and um, and of course um, uh, artistic participants. And this is something that you probably already know, right? Uh, so about one in 100 people are diagnosed. Uh, often there are difficulties with independent living and there are quite some initiatives with assistive technology, but the impact somehow remains really limited, basically. Um, and these are two examples of available technologies. Uh, and when I, when I talk about autism, uh, I think this this goes for neurodiversity in general as well. Uh, and these are specifically uh, specifically designed, uh, for instance, to uh, to have uh, to, to have daily structure or uh, to to support remind uh, with reminders and so on. And these are great, all great, but somehow the, the impact is quite limited. Um, and we're wondering how how does that how why is that? And we think it's often because well the uh, the challenges are described in terms of uh, really functional limitations, for instance, difficulty with planning or dealing with stress or something. Uh, and often designers and engineers also overlook the importance of the experience that people have. 
for instance, Rene, also one of our participants, uses this fidget cube that helps dealing with their stress. So it's not a, a fancy app or something, it's just a, a, a regular fidget cube. So we thought, okay, how how can we how can we make something that helps uh, helps people also designing their own uh, their own solutions, and uh, and we do this in cooperation with uh, with healthcare organizations in the Netherlands, um, but this is something that 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 everybody, as I said, can uh, can probably do um, um, to to come up with with their own with with their own solutions. But the important thing is that there there is a uh, a fellow designer involved. In this case, it's a caregiver, but it can be anyone. It can, it can be your partner. It can be your friend. It can be can be anyone. Uh, again, this is uh, in cooperation with healthcare organizations. So, uh, in this case, it's a caregiver in our case, and they're both going to design yeah their own solutions. And here you can see the 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 the, the process that, that that's underlying in our in our method where. You take several steps to explore your situation, determine a focus, generate ideas, realizing it, testing it, and gaining insights. And that's yeah, centered around my way of doing and my world. That's basically the process. And it's based on design processes, but also on uh, uh, already uh, available approaches in, in, in the healthcare. And the core principles, and I think this is the most important part, um, is that it's, well, first of all, it's user initiated. So the initiative does not lie at a caregiver or or, or at least not for, for the product, for that, that or the, the technology that you want to use, uh, but also not uh, with a designer or an engineer that comes up with all kinds of ideas. The focus is on experience uh, because, yeah, uh, everybody has this unique experience of the world, so uh, we think that that should be the focal point. Uh, and when it's user initiated, well, that it's already based on your experience. Um, action oriented tinkering, meaning that that you are more or less quote unquote allowed to tinker around, to test things, to try things, and also by using off the shelf technologies. So not a, a not not specifically designed assistive technologies, and I think all technology in the end is assistive. So, for instance, my glasses are also assistive for me. So, a technology is a really really broad viewed, broadly viewed. So, off the shelf technologies, and on the right you can see, for instance, the Google Home that's being used by Willem, also uh, one of our participants that everybody can buy, is also not stigmatizing or something compared to, for instance, a pictel board. And, and on the right, on the top right, you see a bracelet designed by Anton that helps him reminding all kinds of activities during the day. And he made this himself. It's, it's not high tech, it's actually low tech. So this is a really nice example of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a low tech, simple solution, um, which is really, really nice, I think. So these are the, uh, the, well, the, the outcomes that we hope for, technology-wise, and these are the, the toolkit prototypes, at least. So we tried out all kinds of toolkits, and now we are in the process. We are now having actually one final version in development um, that's also going to be tested. But these are examples of uh, prototypes that were designed by design students in cooperation with, uh, with autistic people and uh, caregivers. Um, so th this is this is really a short overview of uh, of what our project entails. Again, design your life is a novel approach. We think that uh, uh, allows uh, yeah autistic young autistic adults in our case and their caregivers. But, uh, I think uh, again everybody should uh, should uh, be able to use this to support their independence with the technology based on these four principles and the research. Um, we done that through multiple case studies, ten in total, actually. Uh, and um, yeah, and, and in the end, we will have this. Um, we will have this toolkit available, hopefully, for everybody. Um, if you have any questions, you can 
always reach me at this email address. Uh, we also for, published our first uh, paper about this. You can see that on the right. You can, it's it's uh, open uh, open access available. Um, and uh, yeah, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you, guys. And um, I just want to emphasize on what I've, you know, from, from what I've heard about the principles, I love the emphasis on the lived experience because mm -hmm. oftentimes I do see that solutions that are geared are so out of the lived experiences yep. that it becomes so disconnected or not applicable to those that do, will be using it. And also the use of both low tech and high tech, you know, because when yeah. we think of assistive technology, it's like an immediate, oh, it needs to be something that I buy. You know, it's something that 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 uh, would cost a lot of money or it needs to be in an app form. You know, there, there's always yeah. a, a tech, um, a gadget involved. So thank you for yeah. really emphasizing that we can also find um, solutions that are both, you know, low tech and high tech uh, solutions. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, and I think there are all already so many uh, examples available and so many smart solutions available. Um, so in the end, we also hope that these smart solutions can be shared so that you do not need to maybe invent it yourself or maybe make it yourself, but uh, also get inspired by other solutions. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, guys, for sharing Design Your Life and looking forward to see how it further develops.